come and worship the Lord with us today. And it is a, it's what I don't know if you noticed, but something's happened in the last few days. It was about 15 degrees cooler today than it was three mornings ago. Thank you, Lord. So whoever you uh, Canadians or you youpers from uh, from uh, Michigan or whoever it was, uh, uh, Kelly was in Colorado. She brought some of that cool Colorado air back. We're glad you brought it. Uh, we've had enough of summer for this season. We've just soon passed on it now for a little while. But thanks for being here today. And we have a number of guests with us today. And we're delighted that you've chosen to come here. And uh, you have a couple of ways you can connect with us. We have little cards in the uh, back of the pew that you can put your name and some information on if you would like to do that. Uh, the other possibility, well, <clears throat> by the way, next Sunday there will be food. I'll <laughs> dinner following the fellowship time. And uh, is it still rolling, Joe, or what's it doing? Oh, there it is. Oh, yes. I'll oh, check your phone. I got mine turned off, uh, so that's that's a good thing. This is a reminder for me. I don't know what I did. The, uh, um, the first Sunday of the month, uh, normally we, in having the Lord's Supper, we don't normally have our fellowship dinner, but we're going to do it that way next week. This week, the opportunities, remember a Tuesday morning prayer meeting here, I'm still teaching the Bible study, the community study in Florence at the Windmill Winery on Tuesday nights, and uh, we still have a nice group of folks coming there, and I know that's how we met some of you, was through that Bible study. And then on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock in the kitchen, we're having fellowship time. So, especially for those of you who are driving a distance, we... We want you to get as much out of your traveling to come and be with us as possible. So uh, there are some opportunities for you that will be uh, coming up. Take advantage of those. Um, in the bulletin, you'll notice, uh, and I don't have it on the screen, but if you picked up a bulletin coming in, you can text your personal information either to uh, my phone number or to Pat Newbies. Pat, wave your hand. There's Pat. Pat does what we call our prayer flare. And she sends out emails to anyone that gives us email with our updated prayer requests that come in at every meeting or at other times like that. And uh, so we appreciate that Pat and Dave watch over that, or he watches over her shoulder to make sure she does it. Um, but we, we're really grateful we have, you know, we need to take advantage of the opportunity to connect with each other as busy as our lives are. We don't get to see each other a lot during the week, and we're a bit scattered here. We've got a contingent coming from... Uh, how many folks are here today from Superior? Raise, raise your hand. Yeah, no, that's you. you got to raise your hand. Okay. All right. We've got the... We have... We, now it's kind of easy to remember. We've got Ken and Liz from Superior. And then we have Ken and Sally from Superior. And Ken and Sally didn't know Ken and Liz until we, they connected here at church. So isn't that cool? And then Edna, uh, she's been around Superior for quite some time. And we did find out, by the way, since we got our grand piano here just a couple weeks ago, she just had to mosey over and try it out. Uh oh, she's covered her face. <laughs> we found out she has a hidden talent. <laughs> so uh, once in a while, we're going to try and twist her arm and convince her to come play something as we uh, just rejoice in the Lord together. But if you're visiting with us, if you'd like to fill out some information or send us a text and give us your digits, that would be great. Also, you have the opportunity to go to the website. We have two of them. They're listed in the bulletin for you. And uh, one of them is the church's website, and you can go to uh, the, some of the testimonies people have uh, given on Sundays are under the sermons column because it was combined together with the whole service. Uh, some of them are under testimonies, and I believe Jack's got uploaded this week, Jack's testimony, and I know many of you can't believe that our friendly giant here actually spoke more than three words, but he did, and uh, his testimony is on there, and then of course uh, his daughter, she, uh, didn't you put it out on, the, on Facebook? Yes, she did, and he heard from people in Washington State after it was put out there. In Alaska and all that. That's great, and we just give glory to God for the good things that he's doing. Uh, the other Bible study uh, from Florence, uh, those out and a half teaching sessions from Tuesday nights for the last two years are also available on the internet, and you can go to FlorenceBibleStudy.com and get those. So, are there uh, any other announcements that we need to make today? Did I miss anything? Uh, we'll enjoy the fellowship next week at. Bible study hour. What's that? Bible study hour. Bible study hour. Nine o'clock. So if you're going to come at 10.30, you might as well come at 10. If you're going to come at 10, you might as well come at 9. 
<laughs> and uh, and we'll have fellowship together there. That's right, absolutely. So, does anyone have a special guest that you would like to introduce? Joyce is going to introduce a whole clan over here in a little while. Uh, is there anybody else that has a guest you'd like to introduce today? Bob Jerry is from town. Yeah, Jerry lives here, but uh, He's not a guest, but he is now. But he is. All right, Jerry, we're glad to have you here today. God bless you. And we're delighted to have Keith and Debbie that work with the Arizona Southern Baptist Convention. They've been around for quite a while. Would you guys wave? Uh, we're delighted to have them. We got to meet them at a, uh, a meeting that they put together and coordinated here a few months ago for all the new pastors in the state. So we're glad about that. So, um, this is a, a good time to rejoice. I see another uh, set of folks back there I haven't seen in a bit. Who is that back there behind Dave? Oh, you don't know that this is Dave. J.C. and Gwen. Pardon me? J.C. and Gwen. All right. God bless you. Glad to see you again. How about on the back row? Kevin Kelly over here. Oh. No, no. That's where I heard an induction. And who's that in the back there by Dorothy? Sue. Hi, Sue. Good to see you again. God bless you. God bless you. We're glad, we're glad to see you. Um, our testimony this morning, I hope, Kim, that I spelled your name correctly. Most people don't know Kim except via the prayer flare. Uh, and we'll hear the details about it, but God did something really miraculous this year in preserving Kim. And uh, did I spell it right? O-U-T-H-O-U-T? O-A-T-H? Okay. A-T-H. All right. So uh, Joyce is going to introduce uh, Kim and Kelly and Kim's folks who are no strangers to our fellowship here. Uh, so Joyce, do you want to stand up and introduce them? And then Kim is going to come share this one. Yes. Uh, one of the things, uh, when I was talking to the Lord about uh, introducing Kim and Kelly today was that if you ever doubted that God is still in the miracle working business and you still feel that way after hearing the testimony I gotta have a talk with you <laughs> <laughs> uh, I first knew Kim when she was seven years old and uh, boy does that date us <laughs> uh, her uh, mom and dad uh, my husband was a police sergeant and Doris and Ken, Ken was his chief. And we were the only Christians in a police department, so we became great friends and still are. Uh, we've gone through a lot of things together. Yeah. Doris lost a daughter and we lost a son and, and God pulled us closer together through all that. And now he's... <laughs> This is Kim. This is her husband, Kelly. I was privileged to do their wedding. Wow. That's anyway. great. Amen. Well, come on, uh, Kim, Kelly. Are you coming up with her, Kim, uh, Kelly, to give her a little support there? You bet. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I appreciate people who are willing to open their heart and, and take the risk of really telling about their experience in life. And, and uh, it, I think it really helps us all in our walk with the Lord. So thanks for coming, you guys. God bless you. We really appreciate you coming and being willing to share. Thank you. Well, good morning. Like Joyce explained, I grew up in um, the little town of Forks on the peninsula in Washington State, on the Olympic Peninsula. Um, one of the gifts, probably the most important gift that my parents gave me was knowing God, being raised in it godly household where they taught us that that was our priority, our faith. Um, in 1989, I married Kelly, and uh, then we had a daughter a year later, Nicole Tamra. She was named after my sister, and a lot of you probably don't know that uh, we were baptized here together, Nicole and I, in this church. Wow. So that was about 15 years ago. Um, Kelly and I moved to Arizona in 2013, just a few years ago in May. He had a job offer here, and I was so excited to be close to my parents. So we moved just a few blocks away from them, and uh, we were very excited. And so 
Kelly, growing up in a little waterfront community in Washington State, we were really into boating and we lived on the beach in Washington and loved that type of an adventure. Kelly has brought a lot of adventure to my life. I'm actually an accountant by trade and um, he's really made me enjoy a lot of things that I probably would have never explored had I not been with him. So after we came here and uh, got settled in, we decided Harleys would be a great way to go, Harley motorcycles. Um, so Kelly purchased his first, and about uh, five or six months later, I thought, well, if I want to hang out with him, I'm going to need to get a bike, too. And I had had a dirt bike growing up. I enjoyed that. Um, so actually, my dad initially introduced me to, to motorcycles. And so we felt that um, motorcycles kind of have a bad that reputation to an extent or the people that ride them and it's changed a lot. Um, in our generation there are a lot of people that ride for a different reason and so we got involved or started to get involved in Christian Motorcycle Association. Um, it's a big group that does fundraisers and is very organized and they like to share their faith with other Harley riders as well as people out, you know, out in the public. Um, so we started to get into that, and uh, unfortunately, a few months ago, yes, I know, it's amazing that it's just been a few months ago. It's actually 90 days today is the anniversary of my accident. Um, so we got up uh, June 25th, and he didn't want to go for a ride, but I finally talked him into it. So it was kind of late morning, um, started to heat up, and we took off headed for Scottsdale on our bikes. And um, it was pretty hot. It was about 106 degrees out that day. And so I started to get a little hot. So he decided that we should go home. Actually offered to go get the car, take his bike home, and come back and get my bike. But me being a me do it kind of girl since I was three years old, um, I said, no, I'll be fine. So he checked in with me like he always does, gave me the thumbs up throughout the trip home, back to Gold Canyon from Scottsdale. and. Um, just a few miles from home, I decided I was just a little too hot and felt dizzy, and so I put my blinker on. He was up ahead of me, thinking that I would turn into Bash's parking lot and uh, that he would turn around and, and see that there was a problem. But uh, he might need to take over from here because I don't remember a lot after I turned my blinker on. Um, he said I just started to break and just kept going. So thankfully, I went into the median instead of going down on the 60 or instead of going into oncoming traffic. Um, so I went down and, and uh, the rest of that he needs to take over because I don't remember a lot from there. <laughs> so she went, she went just off the side of the road, 55, 50, 55 miles an hour into the meridian. And I explained it as the devil tripped her <clears throat> and God was her kid. I jumped off my bike. She's not breathing. There's blood everywhere. I just was trying to hold her, and she was unconscious. And all of a sudden, the angels started to appear. There must have been 20 people within two minutes with towels and blankets and water. That's when it all just it started to happen. So she got in the ambulance. They took her to a little hospital about 20 minutes away. I ran home, grabbed the car because I was on my bike. I went to the hospital. She's not there. They had taken her by helicopter to Scottsdale Osborne. Somehow I had a, the trooper's phone number in my, uh, in my phone. I called him and he knew where, they, where she was taken. So I go to Scottsdale Osborne. In the meantime, I called some friends of ours because all these things were going through my head and I couldn't talk to mom and dad at that time. So I asked someone else to call them. I get to Scottsdale Osborne, the guy's standing there with paperwork saying, we gotta cut her open right now, she's bleeding inside. She has ruptured her spleen, let's give you the whole thing. She ruptured her spleen, she punctured her lung, six broken ribs, broken T7, broken C1, scapula, and collarbone and the epidermal hematoma. That's the C, yeah, the neck. And the, the C1, if you know, is about this far away from your brain stem and your spinal cord. 
So the first doctor goes in and he removes her spleen. And they kind of get her stabilized. She's in uh, ICU. And this is Saturday. And then again, it, it just started after that. Just things played out. She had that operation. And then on Monday, she had her ribs. I think it was her ribs first. And they went in, opened her up, put these uh, patches on her ribs. They got her, her lung miraculously, like by Sunday afternoon, had sealed itself back up. So it's not leaking anymore. It's not working, it's flat, but it's not working. She's on a breathing machine. It's like a bazillion machine she's on. Um, Jack and Joyce showed up Saturday night. Mom and Dad were there. Um, and Joyce, I can't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday, but she she told us that she had seen an angel standing behind Kim's head. I used to think Joyce was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll digress for just a minute. The last time I was up on a church a place like this next to the podium was the day the Lord hit me in the side of the head and saved me. So this is only the second time I've been up. <laughs> <laughs> so since then, I've, I've learned to listen to Joyce and my mother. That they got this, I don't know, they got a connection with the Lord. And if I would have listened to them a long time ago, things would have been a lot easier on me. But I'm slow to learn. So over the next several days, she has operations. Her ribs on Monday, and then her, her neck, they're talking about, the neurologists are talking about putting her in one of those big halos that she'll have to be in for six, eight months, who knows. Well, they contact another neurologist, and he's another angel sent from heaven. He comes in, and he's got a new technique to where they put this little tiny slit in her neck, and they go up inside her skull to her back of her neck, and they put a screw in there. And this bone that sits on top, if it would have moved, she could have been paralyzed, but it stayed right there. Everyone did their job all the way from the EMTs, the helicopter guys, it stayed there. So she's a perfect scenario for this. So it's like 7 o'clock at night, and he's going in to cut my wife's neck open to go work on her head. And I, I said, dude, it's 7 o'clock at night, are you ready for this? And he goes, it's not me, it'll be me and the Lord doing it. So, yeah, and that's from a dog. You know, sometimes we think of doctors that they're, they're all that. You know, they can do everything on their own. So. And then the signs just kept coming. The, the, a physician's assistant gave mom a list of five verses. I was going to bring those. They were comfort and comfort verses that he handed her. And this is another physician. It, it was just it was one thing after another. She spent. 12 days in ICU. She had like a 3% chance to make it. Um, 90 days later, I mean, she was broken, just broken. And the Lord, Saturday night, something happened to me as I was in her, sleeping in a chair. I slept in a chair for 12 days. But something happened Saturday night. I don't know what it was, but it was a calmness. I knew she was going to be okay. Just, it wasn't a voice, it wasn't, it was just a feeling. And the other thing that happened to me through this whole thing was, I think it was the first time in my life that I wasn't mad at God about what happened. You know, I'm, I was always getting mad at him. Why'd this happen? Why'd that happen? And so those are the things that, that happened to me during, you know, whether, who knows why this happened? But it is just, it's changed my life. And, you know, it'll never be the same. Yeah, so as my recovery continues, we're just amazed. And I, Kelly slowly told me and mom and dad um, more information about the extent of my injuries. And when I woke up in ICU, I was just really groggy and on a lot of meds. I had a little pick line. And so I um, just wasn't really coherent. And then, when I got out of ICU and part of the staff started coming from where I work, it was like, whoa, I, I missed a couple weeks there. Um, but as we proceed and I find out more about it, I'm so thankful. I mean, there's not, like Kelly said, there's no 
negativity or blame game or anything else. It's, it's just all about what a miracle I am. And, you know, we all know that it was God's intention. He knew this was going to happen. And so this has definitely strengthened our faith. I'm thankful that my spleen ruptured because had it not, I probably would have been in the halo. I wouldn't have had the surgeon that was two in the state of Arizona. When I went to him for my follow-up, he said, I said, between you and God, and he said, I'm just God's servant. So, I mean, like Kelly said, all the way. He's just totally there with God. So it's all just a miracle. And, and like I said, as I find out more, I'm just so thankful that he decided I needed to stick around. And I think he blessed me with my big mouth because he knew that I'd share my story everywhere we go. Whether it's the gas station or in line at the department store, everyone hears my story that works there and is in line behind me. So I just get a chair and go <laughs> It's an absolute miracle. I'm so thankful for the prayers. As we all know, he listens to us. There's no expiration date on prayer. And I've had, from all the churches that we've been involved in, and members <coughs> Uh, I just I can't believe the amount of prayer that was going up and all of you included so we really appreciate you and, and we thank God for everything Amen. absolutely everything Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly I appreciate your honesty uh, you know about getting mad at God you know so often what we experience in church is, is plastic and it's not genuine, it's not real. I love the things in the Bible where, you know, Jesus appeared as the angel of the Lord to Gideon. And, and he says to him, Hail valiant warrior, the Lord's with you. And Gideon's just plain and honest like that. He says, well, if God is with us, then where are all the miracles? <laughs> and of course, the Lord raised Gideon up. But I love that honesty because that's what God wants us to do as we come to worship Him, is to really be honest. Throw, throw away the plastic face. My wife and I used to be so good. We'd argue and fight all the way down to the church when I was pastor in Mesa. <laughs> and boy, when you open the door in the parking lot, ding, you know, you put on the plastic smile and everything is wonderful and nothing's ever bad happened to us and... You know, life is just a cakewalk, and it's a bunch of baloney. You know, we need, to, we need to be able to come honestly to God, and that's what God wants from us. Thank you for that, Tim and Kelly, and, and there's no doubt about God's hand being there. One of the things that we've been making a, a, a little technical emphasis on here that may seem small, the men studied the whole Bible study today about a preposition, and uh, there are sometimes very powerful things in minutia. But one of the things we've learned is there is no power in prayer. This is, I really believe this is important for God's people. There is no power in prayer. There is power in God and in His kingdom. And prayer is the vehicle that He's assigned for us to connect with Him. And what we're hearing today from Kim and Kelly and the testimonies that we've heard is the power of God that we can access through the vehicle of prayer. Uh, some of what happens about saying, you know, there's power in prayer is people start getting full of themselves thinking, look at me, I know how to pray. No, 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 no. There's no power in prayer, but there's power in God. And, and he's certainly been at work. And isn't it awesome, after weeks of seeing Kim's name on our prayer flare and praying for, the, for their family and all, and of course, while she's in the hospital, Doris has to have a procedure, and they were both in the hospital at the same time. So it was, it's been a very difficult time, and here they are today in the joy of the Lord. That's awesome. We're going to start our worship time together by, by singing our, uh, our song, We Have uh, Come Into His House. And, uh, and really we tweaked it just a little because you need to understand this isn't God's house. This is where God's people meet. This is just a gathering place. The heart is God's house. And God's here this morning with us, not because He lives in the carpet and pews and the ceiling fans, but because you came with your heart on Jesus. So I just ask you to stand with me and we'll put the words up here. So there's so many versions of this, we'll try to sing one that's uh, similar. Mm -hmm. We bless your name, Lord. We praise you today. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship. 
worship you.